really, really well. I'm super excited to get started with this, super excited to get everybody going with the 30 day challenge. I'm I'm so astounded to see how many people have already signed up for this, how many people are really raring to get going, raring to get into a good routine with their running strength, conditioning work, and ultimately injury prevention work. We all know that, yes, you can talk about the performance benefits of getting stronger as a runner, you know, holding good form for longer, but really, the bottom line with all this is that we know that runners who are in good habits with their strength conditioning work get injured less often and that really is what this is all about if we can prevent injuries we can be more more consistent with our training if we can be more consistent with our training that's how we get faster we see those personal bests or prs if you're in the states or you know those best times and we will progress as runners and that's really what this is all about so it's going to be a month of focused work Short, sharp little workouts. Today, I'm gonna to spend a little bit longer going through these because there are some alternative exercises I want to show you from phase one, but this is a great opportunity to get started. Now, before we get really going with this, I want to get a bit of a feel for where everybody's from. So just down in the comments, I can see we've got, what's that, 73 people, as it shows on my end anyway, watching right now. Let me know where you're from. Where are you watching this from at the moment? And I'll have a quick look down in the comments here. Some familiar faces, we've got Audrey, nice to see you Audrey. Sarah Knowles, Andy Brett, I see you mentioned coffee in the pre, uh, the, the little kind of pre-live chat. Yes, I've got a coffee on the go here. And um, yeah, I really can't wait to see how we all get on with this. Now, a few things that we need to just cover off to begin with. So firstly, not to do this from cold, a little warm up is, uh, Again, we're going to take it easy working into this today, but particularly as we get into the second phase, even five minutes, a little bit of cardio, brisk walk, something like that would be ideal. But with today's, just start gently and build into it. You'll be absolutely fine. And with that, don't force any of the exercises. If it doesn't feel great, if it feels like pain rather than, a, in this case, with some of the mobility work stretch, then again, ease off that little bit. But we'll, we'll get into that properly as we get started. For those of you who aren't familiar, my name's James Dunn. I'm a sports rehabilitation therapist for here, uh, from here in the UK. And my job really is all about helping runners prevent injuries and return stronger from injuries. And that's how this whole challenge came about. And the challenge has actually been live since 2014. It's been live for a long time. But every now and again, I like to do these little restarts of the challenge, get things going again, get us all on the same page so we can do it en masse. Because doing it en masse generally speaking, makes it a heck of a lot easier for all to stay, us all to stay on target with this and, uh, and stay on the program and get through the 30 days. Because 30 day challenge, the challenge really is all about making it through. The exercises, some of them are challenging, but the exercises themselves aren't really the challenge. The challenge is being consistent. Right, let's have a look through here. We've got Kath from Newport, South Wales, Simon from North Yorkshire. We've got, yeah, Audrey, South London. We've got, uh, uh, Chaz from Hull, Ed saying you're watching from Shoreham of, uh, by Sea, Tony from Wallington, Peter from Buntingford, I don't know where that is, Christian from Norway, uh, da Diane, Dana sorry, from Cyprus, Sarah from Auckland, I could keep going. Amazing to see what a, a diverse bunch we have and really all you need to know about the challenge to start with is where to find the actual link to find the full program. So this is great that we're here on day one and we're going to work through this first um, workout together. But to get the full program, there's a link in the pinned comment and it's in the description as well here on this video, um, which will take you through to a page which will look like this. And this page, you, all you've got to do is click the, the button underneath the video, click get started, leave your email address and it will send you all the details you need to work through this. Instead, I'm going to be answering every day Q and A's in the Facebook group. And if you're not sure what the Facebook group is, head on over to Facebook, check out Transform Your Running. Uh, and for those who aren't in the Facebook group or aren't on Facebook, don't worry, you can actually, again, leave questions in the comments to any of these videos and I'll address those as I get into the, uh, the, the mode of answering more comments and the mode of obviously doing more of these live streams, which will be the first day of every stage of the challenge. So we've got five stages, six days with each stage, and the first day of each of those stages is going to be a live stream like this. Okay, and it's not just gonna be talking head, I've set it up so that we've also got the studio space that we can work through the exercises. I've been a little bit brave, 
I've, um, I've allowed the dog to be free, free range while we do this. So it may be that I'm joined by Charlie as we, as we get going. Right, for those of you who've not been on a live stream with me before, I do a little bit of this beforehand. We kind of talk and uh, make sure everyone has the opportunity to get onto the live stream before we really kick things off. So let me have a quick sip of this. Then we'll have a quick look at the comments again, and then we'll get started properly. Okay, so what will happen once I, once I kind of do a brief intro, talk about stage one in particular, we'll get straight into the exercises. So you've got about two minutes probably before we start with the, um, the, active, hamstring, the active hip flexor stretch, which we're going to kick things off with. Really, really grateful to everyone joining me today. Really, really excited to do this with you all. So uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing how you get on. Malcolm's from Lancashire. Sandra from, uh, from Little Wayton. We've got San Jose, California. Nal is from there. We've got Jonathan from Hong Kong. Um, we've got Janet from Leicestershire. We've got uh, Jacopo from, I'm sorry, I absolutely murdered that name, from, uh, from Italy. Amy from Sydney. Fantastic. Right, folks, are you ready? We're going to get started. We're going to get straight into this right now. So let's just get this set. Fantastic. Okay. Morning, guys, and welcome to the first day of the 30-day challenge. This is the first day of stage one, and stage one is all about mobility work and some basic body weight, uh, some, some body weight balance and stability work. We're not using any equipment, nothing like that. There really should be no barriers to getting started with this. It's all about just gently starting to feel where you're perhaps a little bit tight. We spend a lot of focus on looking at those hips in particular and seeing, given that running is effectively a, uh, a, a a series of bounds from one leg to the other, let's see how good we are at actually standing balanced on one leg. This is day one. As we work through this first stage, we start making these exercises, particularly the balances, a little bit more challenging. We'll talk about that as we get started, but let's get straight in to this little bit of mobility work to start. So if you're ready to go, I'm ready to get right into it. Right, so the first exercise we're going to work through is our half kneeling hip flexor stretch. So with this, we're really looking to get stuck into our hip flexors, but particularly a muscle called rectus femoris, straight down the front of the thigh. Now, we're gonna start out in half kneeling here. You can, with the rear foot, you can either be on your toes or foot flat to the ground. I kind of don't mind, that's up to you. This generally will create a little bit more of a stretch, but the big important thing to think about is what's happening around your hips and pelvis. A lot of the time when people think about hip flexor stretch, they simply lunge straight into it. What I want you to do is actually stay nice and tall, nice and upright, and think about your pelvis like a bowl of water. I want you to think that if you squeeze your butt and tuck your belly button in, you can feel that you're gonna start tucking your tailbone underneath, and it's almost like we're tipping the water out of the back of the bowl. In that position, you should feel a stretch down the front of your thigh without even needing to lunge forwards. Hold that stretch on for 20 seconds to start with. We're going to hold this statically initially, but then we're going to turn that into more of an active mobility exercise. So after 20 seconds, a little bit longer, we're going to focus on glute activation and using a contract, relax sequence. One second on, one second off, to start adding a bit of movement around the hips and pelvis and starting to dynamically get a little bit more of a stretch through rec then. So pull out about 20 seconds. From here, you're going to relax and squeeze your butt. One second on, one second off. One second on, one second off. One second on, one second off. And as we work through this, you should feel that every time you go one second on, you feel a stretch at the front of your thigh. And every time it's one second off, that stretch releases. Okay, I'm just going to keep working through this. We're looking to do 20 of these reps. Talking and counting is not my forte. I'm going to call that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then there's 20. Good, so 20 seconds static hold. 20 contract, relax, reps. We're doing this three times through. So, on the other side now. 
from here. One thing to keep an eye on if you're doing this in front of a mirror is to check that you're not hitching your hips and that you're not setting up turned out. So keep this knee facing forwards, try and keep as square as you can with the hips. 20 seconds, squeezing your butt to begin with. Okay, holding this on. And that's really one of the reasons why I like this exercise, is that we're starting to combine a little bit of glute, conscious glute activation work, really getting you to feel, you can even put your hand on your butt cheek and start to feel that you're activating and engaging your glutes at the same time as we're starting to challenge the length of particularly rectus femoris. We're hitting rect firm there, so we're extending the hip and flexing the knee. Now, 20 seconds, so we relax, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and there's 20. Okay, now, if you've got any questions about this, we're gonna work through all three rounds. If you've got any questions about these or any of these exercises as we go, if you're watching this live, <clears throat> then let me know down in the comments and I'll jump in and see where I can give you some instant answers. Okay, now, Next up, what I want to do is show you a, an alternative to that exercise because I've obviously got the mat here, but if you're doing this in an environment where the ground is pretty solid, then this standing version, it hits a slightly different hip flexor muscle. So the standing version is more about iliopsoas, not rectus femoris, but again, for us runners, such a powerful, powerful stretch. So the principle's the same. If your front foot elevated, and this could be onto a chair, onto a desk, wherever you can get to about, what is about knee height? This is a little bit high for this for me, but it's, it can do the job nicely. Kick the back foot back, straight leg with that rear leg. Okay, from here, same idea, we tuck the pelvis, do the stretch up in here. Okay, we hold this on for 20 seconds to start with. Again, the timings, it doesn't really matter, it can be fairly loose with this, it doesn't matter if it's 15, 25, we're just starting to work for a little bit of, yes, a static stretch, and I know from a static point of view, we don't want to do too much static stretching, if any, pre-sport, but the way in which I'm setting this up, going static first into a bit more of a, an active mobility drill, a little bit more dynamic, is far more preferable. So after 20 seconds, we go relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, contract. One second off, one second on. Where I'm saying contract, I do mean squeeze your butt. One, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm amazed we haven't been joined by the dog yet. We'll see how that pans out as I start lying on the floor with the hamstring mobility work. Okay, other side. Okay, tuck the tailbone, squeeze your butt, tipping the water out the back of the pelvis, or the back of the bowl, as it were, feeling that we're getting that posterior pelvic tilt, feeling that stretch at the front of the standing leg. Again, 20 second hold with this. And then the next time round, the third and final time we do this, back on the mat, I'll show you another variation where we start, particularly for those who've struggled with ITB syndrome in the past, we start to get into some of these more lateral structures. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, from here, relax, contract, relax, contract. Consciously feel, squeeze your butt on that standing leg, and relax, squeeze, and relax. It's not a big lunge forwards. You should feel, if anything, just a little pelvic thrust. What's that, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Little thrusts, really feeling that up around the top of my thighs, around that hip flexor region. Now, for the third variation of this, I'm going to show you gets a little bit more into a muscle called tensor fasciae TFL. Before we do that, let's quickly check these comments. 
Good job. Okay, if the knee hurts, do with the standing. Yes, so if your knee hurts down here, doing this one, or the first variation, so any of the kneeling variations, hop up, do the standing variation. So, this variation, same idea. We're going to start out again, tuck the pelvis, feel the stretch. Same hand as the kneeling leg. I want you to reach up and over the top. And as your hand goes that way, I want your hips to go that way. So we're starting to get this kind of bowing effect through your torso and through your hips. Okay, so it's not just a reach, it really is a bowing lengthening this whole lateral line. From here, after 20 seconds, we're going to, you guessed it, add a little bit of movement. As we add the movement, I'm not just shifting sideways, so I'm not just sending my hips that way, I want to send my hips off at 45 degrees that way, so I'm still pushing forwards, but with that sideways movement. So we're one, two, three, four, five, looking to push this way, not this way, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, some of you, if you're tight through muscle like tense fasciolata, will feel that around the outside of the hips. Others, you might feel that based in your kind of, uh, in your abdominals, through your obliques, up into your ribcage. Less, less likely, but some of you might. Okay, so on this side, doing the same thing. Up and over. Holding this to begin with, 20 seconds. Then after 20 seconds, we can add in that same movement, obviously going that way this time. Now, don't know if you guys can hear the helicopter. My apologies if that's quite loud. Okay, so I'm a little bit tighter on this side. No big shock. And that's something that I'm, I've no doubt you'll notice as well, so you've got one side that feels a little stiffer through various exercises than the other. Okay, let's add in the movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, go gentle, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. Good. Now, if you do have one side, like I do there, that feels that little bit stiffer or that little bit like it's not as easy to get the movement, don't force it and just take note as we work through these exercises and see if there's any consistent patterns. Because if there are, that probably tells you, mobility-wise, which side you need specifically to spend a little bit more time focusing on. You might want to double up reps or add an extra set on that side. The same goes for the balance work. If you've got one side that's really wobbly, guess what? We need to spend a bit more time focusing on stabilizing that wobbly side. We'll look at that as we get into this a little further. Okay, let's quickly check the comments. Okay, the variation. So, uh, Weevil in a Box says, is this variation with the glutes activated throughout or on and off in sync with the movement? Great shout, great question. On and off in sync with the movement. So, as I'm here, as I push across, and I'm wanting my hips to go that way. That's when I squeeze my butt. I'll show you from this angle. So as I'm here, I'm looking to push my hips forwards that way. I'm squeezing my butt as I push and then relax. So push and relax. Squeeze and relax. Squeeze and relax. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Okay, second exercise in this little routine is our active hamstring mobility work. This is one of my favorites. And this exercise in particular, I just want to kind of give a little bit of a, a word of warning. This exercise in particular is only really something you need to worry about if you have a, and by that I mean something you might want to avoid, if you have a recent history of kind of acute hamstring tendinopathy, high hamstring tendinopathy, so your typical kind of pain up in this kind of region. If that's you, then I'd give these a miss and have a look at the high hamstring tendinopathy exercises I have on this YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type it in, you'll find me. Um, high hamstring tendinopathy, James Dunn. Do those instead. But for the rest of us who just generally perhaps have a bit of tension through our hamstrings, this is a fantastic exercise. So, I'm gonna start out with you lying on your back. 
And by the way, if you're finding this interesting, finding this helpful, do please hit the like button, give me a little bit of feedback, that really helps. From here, we're going to just tuck your fingers in behind your knee, the lower part of the thigh. From this point, I don't want you pulling your knee in towards your chest. It's not about this movement. Your hands are just there to support the thigh, so work off straight arms. From there, keep the ankle loose and floppy, and we'll just come up and down. Two, three, and as we work up and down, you're straightening the leg by squeezing your quads. So after a few reps, you might find that those quads get a little bit tired, that's normal. That might be an indication of perhaps a bit of quad weakness. But as you come to this point where you straighten the leg out, as you come up to here, you'll hopefully feel a bit of a stretch in your hamstrings. Okay, pull that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay, and then the same now on the other side, I'm really paranoid that I'm missing numbers as I'm talking about this, because my brain's thinking about the next thing I need to tell you, whilst my mouth is passively just working through 1 to 20, which, at my age, I should have nailed down by now, but every now and again I get to 15, 16, I think, did I say 13? I don't know. So, <laughs> again, with these, I'm less about the fact that it has to be 20. Really, I'm about you just doing this on a regular basis. So, 20 is a good ballpark. I'm going to be talking as I'm doing this, so there's no chance of me talking and accurately counting. So the, the practice, the regular practice, is really what you should be working towards. I'm going to call that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, one of the most common questions around this exercise is when you get to this point and you start to feel, or yes, you feel a little bit of kind of pain free, but grinding, and you hear the crunching, the kind of what we call crepitus of that kind of noisy kneecap. Now, if that's you, don't be worried, that's actually completely normal, as long as there's no pain. Okay, there's a degree of wear and tear that all of us have, and if you MRI'd, or you, know, you, you scan a population, an active population of people's knees, you would find that so many of them have no knee pain at all, but there is a degree of wear and tear there in the knees. Now, like I said, nothing to worry about whatsoever, completely normal for, for active people, but if there is pain, that might be something you want to get looked at. But just generally, a bit of creaking, Bit of noise, yeah, don't worry about it too much. It's just part of the course. Okay, gonna work through. 10 more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, same on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm starting to feel that now in my quads, particularly on this side, which is the side I had the knee ligament, the ACL reconstruction a number of years ago. I know that this side has a degree of, slight degree of weakness in comparison to the other side. So particularly lower quads and regions like VMO, we often talk about, this kind of active straight leg raise is actually a really good strengthening exercise. So you kind of get a bit of a double whammy in terms of mobility for the hamstrings and basic strengthening for the quads here. Okay, let's just do three more. One, two, three. I'm going to say that's around about 20. Okay, so 
Right there, we have two sets of 20 on each side. We're going to do one more round, but I want to talk in particular about the sciatic nerve and particularly kind of the tendency for people to get hamstring stretching a little bit wrong. You may well have seen the video that I did uh, a few weeks ago talking about the difference between a hamstring stretch here, where people feel the burn in the back of the knee, which is what a lot of people look for in a hamstring stretch, but that's not a hamstring stretch, versus stretching your hamstrings here, where you feel the, the back of the thigh, really where those hamstrings, mid muscle belly lives. The big difference between those two is how we put tension through the sciatic nerve. If you have a tendency for any lower back pain, any sciatic symptoms, nerve pain down the back of the leg, then what you do with your ankle in this exercise is really, really important. So, same exercise, but I want to talk about the difference between being here, dorsiflexed at the ankle, versus fairly loose at the ankle. Between dorsiflexed at the ankle, so toes pulled up towards your shins, you may well feel that you get to there and you feel that burning again behind the back of the knee. Instead, loose ankles, nice and relaxed, much easier to get to a straight leg because we're not putting that tension on the sciatic nerve. Okay, four, five, six. And again, as with any of these, they're causing pain. Give them a breather, give them a break. Perhaps if it's more sustained pain, it's something that you know about as an old injury, then again, perhaps time to get it looked at, get another pair of eyes on it, get back into a good rehab and treatment routine. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so on the other side now. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. Okay, so that's three rounds of our active hamstring mobility work. Now, again, if you're finding this interesting, finding this helpful, hit the like button, give me that feedback, let me know. And if you know someone who benefit from this 30 day challenge, a runner who needs to get into a better habit with their mobility work, their strength work, their balance work, their injury prevention work, then share the link to this video Give them this resource. It's completely free. It's going to be here forever. I'm not taking it down. And hopefully, oh, hang on, what's happened here? Hold up. Give me one second. That was inevitable. Are we back in the game? Yes. Like I say, it's completely free. It's not going anywhere. And it's something you'll be able to refer to time and time and time again. Okay, fingers crossed, we're back. Folks, did that, uh, did that skip out for you, or was that okay? Hopefully that was okay. Right, still trying to work out the best setup for, uh, for live streaming with what we have here, so hopefully this is gonna behave properly. Next exercise, we've got our adductor mobility work. So, a couple of variations of this. We're gonna work to start with, with what's in the first day challenge. You might want to do this on a soft, surface. Now, that could be a mat, that could be putting cushions under your knees, or a little bit of a hack here, and it's something that you might want to do behind closed doors because it looks a little bit sketchy. You might want to do this on your bed. We're going to start out in a position where we're going to go knees apart, feet close together. In this position, we're going to go hands down, and you should feel straight away a stretch through your adductors, a stretch through your groin. And what we're going to do we're going to do a series of contract, relax movements. So I want to try and press your inner knees, and this is why it's nice to have a, a soft surface, the inner aspect of your knees into the ground, almost like we're trying to bring your legs together. We're gonna to hold that for seven seconds. We count to seven, three, four, five, six, seven, and then breathe in, out, and relax. Good, good. 
When we relax, we're going to just relax for 10 seconds, see if we can get any deeper into the movement. Then we're going to go seven again. Now this seven, as with all of them, should only be a kind of a two out of 10 in terms of effort. So here we go again. Ready? And squeeze. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breathe in. And out and relax. And again, trying to get a little deeper. Okay, we're going to go again and squeeze. So this kind of PNF stretching, where we're actually using the muscle group we're trying to stretch to gently, gently work, gently activate for a short period of time, just working through seven seconds and then relaxing for 10 seconds, means that after this, this uh, isometric hold, there should be a degree of time where, and relax, where the muscle group itself should be more receptive to a stretch. So it's referred to as post-isometric re relaxation, and it's pretty straightforward. It's just contract, relax, stretching. Okay, we're, gonna get, we're doing 10 of these, by the way. We go again. So squeeze, try and bring those knees together, but really we're just pressing down into the mat. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Four, five, six, seven. Breathe in. Out and relax. Good, good, good. Okay. Then we'll go again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Breathe, breathe, breathe. No, at no point do I want you bracing or holding your breath. Just keep that squeeze on. Okay. Breathe in. Then out and relax. Okay, that's five. I'm going to show you five more from a different angle. So front side on here. Again, knees out, feet together. From here, bringing those knees into the mat. So it's like we're trying to pull the knees together like that. We're not allowing them to slide. We're just pressing down into the mat. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You should feel those adductors, those inner thigh muscles, those groin muscles working hard with this. If your inner knees are feeling uncomfortable, so the inner aspect of your knees, then there is an alternate exercise I'm going to give you in a second. And relax. Okay. What we can do during this relaxation period is just shift back and forth, just trying to feel the stretch move as we work through the different range of motion of the hip. Okay, and we'll go again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Let me know if you're doing this along with me. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on, which exercise you're finding the hardest so far. I'd love to know. Okay, and relax. Got two more of these, and I'll show you that alternative. Okay, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Keep pressing those knees into the ground. Just seven seconds. And relax. Got one more. Okay. And squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Last lot. This, for me, of all the exercises, is the one that people give me the feedback in the past that is the most uncomfortable. I'd love to know if you find that as well. Okay, it shouldn't be painful, it shouldn't be painful on your knees. Okay, if you are finding it painful on the knees, trust me, we've got that alternative coming up. Okay, and relax. We'll just hang out here for another few seconds. Again, just shifting back and forth. Right. That's one round of those, we've got one more to go, but we're gonna, instead of doing that all over again, I'm gonna show you the alternate exercise. So you can do this alternative with a cushion under one knee, but it's far less about putting pressure on the inside of the knees, because I know what puts a lot of people off with that frog exercise. So we're gonna go into half kneeling, but abductive, so leg out to the side there. Same principle, we're gonna press the leg down into the ground, as we press the inside of the foot down to the ground here, you'll feel those adductors working. I'm going to hold this just for seven seconds. And then after seven seconds, what I want you to do is just work up and down. So you're kneeling back, heel to butt, then back up to the top. One, two, three, keep this going, four, Five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Okay, good. We're going to do five of these on this side, five on the other. So from here, inside of the foot, pressing down into the ground, keeping this knee straight. We're not looking to bend this knee. Okay, this guy stays straight. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. I see a few comments coming in. I'll jump in after this set of left and then right, and then we'll see what those comments are saying. Hope you're getting on well with this if you're doing this at home. You okay, breathe in and relax. Okay, so down to up. And two and three and four and five and six seven eight nine. Ten. Good. Keep this squeeze on. I'd love to know, again, if you're watching this live, let me know what you're up to running-wise this weekend. I know as we're watching this, obviously park runs are a no-go. It's a Saturday morning for those of you who are watching the replay. Park runs are a no-go for obvious reasons, but I'd love to know what you are up to if you are getting out and running. Breathe in and relax. Tell me what you've got planned. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's squeeze again. Doing this twice more. Amazed Charlie hasn't come through yet. Charlie, come here. You come join. Come here. Just looking at me. Okay, keep that squeeze. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, give me a squeeze. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. It's only meant to be two or three out of ten effort wise, but as we go through these reps, that becomes harder and harder to sustain, I find anyway. With these, I should have mentioned as we come, so breathe in, out and relax. As we come and sit deeper, the stretch should move down towards the inner knee, and then as we come up, it's really hot, high in those, ab those kind of groin muscles, those deeper adductors. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, other side, we're gonna do five reps on this side. Okay, so from here again, pressing down. Only seven seconds. Four, five, six, seven. Breathe in. House and relax. Okay, down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, and push. So you push, you feel those adductors fire up. Again, it's the same principle we're using. We're using that post isometric relaxation, another PNF technique, where after we've worked low level activation for these, these adductor muscles, they'll be more receptive to that stretch, more ready to feel that effectiveness of the mobility work we do after, which will be this up and down seat. So in, there we go again, down to up. And two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and squeeze. Two down, three to go. After we've done this exercise, so after we've done the next three reps here, all that's left is a couple of 30 second balances on each side. So we're so nearly there with this workout. 
stick with it. Let me know in the comments if you're doing this alongside me. I'd love to know whether you're watching live or watching after the fact. I'd love to know that you're here getting this done. Okay, breathe in. How to relax. One, two. I'll show you this from the other angle in a second. Ten. Okay, let me show you from this angle. I feel that this will be, again, potentially useful for you to see. So, keeping this knee straight, we're not bending this knee. This guy so straight, pushing that leg down to the ground. Holding this on. Good. Keep this going. Breathe in. Out and relax, and then from here, you can either do this sitting down onto a flat foot here or onto your heel, it's up to you. Okay, I personally have a fairly stiff big toe on that side, so on this leg, I find it more comfortable to stay down. Four, five, six, seven. I wanted to show you this angle because it's all about keeping your back straight, hinging at the hips. Good. Back to this angle here. Two more. And squeeze. Breathe in. How to relax. Okay. Down to up. Down to three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we ten. Last one, squeeze. Really feel those adductors firing up as you press your foot down into the ground there, trying to bring the leg down underneath you. Obviously, the ground is in the way. Okay. And breathe in. Now to relax. Down to up. Eight, nine, and ten. Great job. Okay, so that's our adductive mobility work as well. Now, of course. We put three sets of the hip flexor work, three sets of the hamstring work, two sets of this. If you're time crunched, don't feel bad about compressing that down. Again, I know that a lot of us are fairly time poor. The key to this, and I know that sounds like a cop out, but the key to this is consistent, regular practice. Not being a hero and doing all the sets and reps every time and, um, and rushing it and not giving the quality. I'd rather you do half the amount, half the volume, but get real quality, but do it regularly every single, in this challenge, every day. But going forwards, three or four times per week, on average, that will really benefit your running. Now, let's have a quick look at these comments, just real quick, before we get into the balance work. Okay, so, uh, Simon says, plus one on the shaking leg for the hamstring stretch. So, the shaking leg, it's called phasic recruitment. Basically, it's neuromuscular fatigue of those quads. Again, it's a hamstring stretch, but we're using the quads to straighten the leg there. It tells us a little bit about um, fatigue in those quads and, and strength, particularly kind of strength endurance in those quads. So for us runners, that's actually really important to note and really important to work on. It does tell us where we're starting to, uh, starting to find some weaknesses. But the good thing is, with that exercise, we're actually using the exercise as combined hamstring, stre uh, hamstring stretching, but also a little bit of quad strengthening. So as you do more of it, even within this week, the more you do more of it, the better you'll find you get at it, and the less of that shaking you'll actually find. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the, uh, the, the balance work now. Let me know if you're finding this helpful. Okay, I'd, um, yeah, I'd love just to know how you're getting on with this, really. Okay, give me one second, and we're gonna get straight in to those balance exercises. Give me a moment. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go. Now, with those balance exercises, the mistake a lot of people make, or the, the misconception they have, having perhaps read, skim read, the information on the challenge, is that the, there are a lot of balance exercises listed and shown in this first stage of the challenge. You don't have to do every exercise of the balance exercises every day. Just do the exercises that it states on the given day you're on. So if you're on day one, it is 30 seconds, single leg balance, eyes open, twice on each side. That's it. If you're on day two, it's 30 seconds, single leg balance, eyes closed on each side. Then as you, balance, as you go through the first stage of the challenge, you'll find that you actually do get better at balancing quite quickly in most cases, but you'll find that it progressively gets harder. You don't have to do all the balances every time. Let me just say that once and for all. Okay, standing with a soft knee, I'm gonna grab my uh, phone, because my phone is acting as my timer. Here we go. So, standing with a soft knee, all I want you to do is stand on one leg, eyes open, and maintain this balance. Simple as that. Okay, it's all you need to do in this first stage. Now, if you're feeling that phasic recruitment in the, um, in the hamstring mobility exercise, you're feeling those quads shaking, it might be if you're standing with a soft knee here, so you're not locking the knee out, it might be you feel that same shaking. Again, this is good training for you in terms of maintaining that control of the knee in this balanced position. Okay, 30 seconds, other side. Again, soft knee. Here we go. Use your hands to balance if you need to. Do it next to a wall if you need to. It's up to you. Do what you need to do. Okay. My phone keeps on, uh, keeps on closing itself, so I can't see the time. I have to tap it with my toe, but that's fine. Okay, over halfway now. Okay, this might seem really simple to some of you, but others, you'll really feel that the balance is a challenge. You wait until the next few days when you have you doing this eyes closed to see what visual creatures we are. Okay, now, with this, if you feel your toes beginning to claw, if you feel that you're starting to almost kind of grasp at the ground with those toes, and you feel that as you do these balance exercises, your calves start to work hard, that will tell us a lot about where you're not working in terms of those glutes. You should be finding that you get some stability from the hip, some stability from around the ankle, really both of which to protect the knee, which is a joint stuck in between hip and ankle that really thrives on stability. But if you're not doing enough to get stability from the hip, then what will happen is you'll end up overworking in terms of needing to provide stability at the ankle, and that's where you feel those muscles, deep muscles in your calf region. It's probably not even gastroc, it's not even the big meat to one of those calves, it's deep muscles like those deep toe flexors that really start working hard. So try and keep your toes splayed and consciously squeeze your butt as you do this. Okay, this is coming up for 30 seconds on the other side and relax. So two times, 30 seconds on each side with the balances. Okay, and that is our stage one workout. I'd love to hear how you feel with that, how you're getting on. Oh, hang on a second. What's going on here? Where's my... Uh, there we go. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear how you get on with this. Let me know in the comments how you found that first workout. It's certainly something which, again, I've made that last, why are we, nearly 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. It should be much quicker if you're not talking your way through it by any means. Um, you should be able to rattle through this quite quickly. But if you've only got 15 minutes, 10 minutes, pick the exercises. Instead of doing three rounds, do two rounds, one round, Consistency is the key here, not being, um, you know, not seeing it as overwhelming and therefore not doing it. Okay, I'd much rather you find a consistent way of doing it. That's not me giving you an easy out. Well, ideally, you'd work the whole way through it, but consistency in this first day challenge is the bottom line. A lot of runners don't do any of this, so if you can just pick up some of this and run with it, excuse the pun, then that is, that's perfect, that's ideal. Right, Weevil in a Box, looks like you've enjoyed that, fantastic. Um, Glynis says, whoop whoop. Okay, um, can I bend the knee of your standing leg uh, a little bit? Yes, absolutely. Um, now, JD Jesus is from Dominican Republic, great to have you here. 
Balance, is it better to do shoes on or shoes off? I personally think that the continuum goes shoes on, gives you a little bit of support from your shoes, then go shoes off, which means your feet are left to figure it out for themselves without that support. So that should be a little bit harder than doing it with your running shoes on. And then next still is doing it with shoes off on an uneven surface or a wobbly surface. So for me, the red mat is a little bit squishy. So it means my foot has to work harder because I'm not on a stiff, hard, solid ground. Does that make sense? So start shoes on and then you can work along that continuum. Um, okay, so Liam says, glad for your comments. I'm not just focusing on doing literally every rep and set. You find it really hard to follow with plans like this. But instead, yeah, you like what I'm saying in terms of, I think what you mean is there in terms of my consistency. So if that is, then yeah, consistency is the key here. Just like you're running, right? It's exactly like you're running. The run runners who have done well over time, and by well, I don't, I'm not talking about performance. I'm talking about being consistent and seeing improvement over time and, you know, have had a good longevity to their running, understand that it's not about nailing key sessions week after week after week after week. It's about showing up. It's about showing up and sometimes you run, it might all be the session that you had in mind because it's just a rough day, but you get out and you run anyway and it's an easy run where perhaps you meant to do a tempo run, but you get the benefit for getting the job done. Or you cut a run short, but you still ran. That's really the kind of the, the key here. It's just making sure we keep building on that consistency. Third day challenge is what that is all about. Um, okay, so Claudette says you like the live feed and doing it at the same time. Fantastic. Um, Sandra's loving it. Um, is this the same as trying to press a ball between your thighs um, with the adductor stretch? Yes, but in a slightly different position, a bit more abducted. So yeah, very similar story in that respect. Um, okay, Greg says, do you suggest that we finish all the sets of the same exercise before you're moving on, or can we do each exercise? Um, so basically you're saying is, is do circuits versus doing them all of one, all of the next, all of the next. I vary that, to be honest. Today I did all of one, all of the next, all of the next, because I find it easier when I'm instructing it like this, just to talk about one exercise, then talk about the next exercise, then talk about the next exercise. Personally, when I'm doing it, I find it more interesting to do circuits. I do three rounds, this exercise, that exercise, that exercise, this, that, that, this, that, that. Much more interesting. Um, but yeah, that's, that's entirely up to you, Greg. Okay, you're not feeling it in your uh, abductors, Liam says. Okay, okay. Um, so you mean inner thighs? So adductors, I mean, if that's the case, if you're talking about the adductor stretch, it may be that you're just not particularly tight there. Maybe that's not what you need in particular. And that's something going through this particular challenge, this particular routine um, program, you'll find, you'll find some exercises that you say, yes, it's like this exercise is for me. Other exercises you'll say, it's not really, I'm not really feeling it. It's not really doing much for me. That's where you intuitively can say, okay, well, the ones that I feel are probably the ones that you need the most. And the ones that you're not really feeling, as long as you're trying to work on making sure you've got you're getting it right and you're working with good form, if it's not really hitting the spot for you, particularly with the mobility work, then it's probably not an important area for you to, to work on. Big generalization, I appreciate, but in terms of me writing a general program like this, it won't be all things to all people. So instead, as we work through this, make a mental note, yes, hip flexor stretch, that I felt like I need, particularly on my left-hand side, or my balance work on my right is rubbish, so I need more balance work. And then just work going forwards, make sure you keep working on those little bits. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, Weevil in a Box says, hamstring stretch. With your head on the floor, the small of your back was arched off the floor. Is that okay? Or, yeah, or you can only, basically you can only have back or head on the floor at once. I want to show you a little variation to that, if I can. Right, I might, I might not be able to do this for much longer, so let's quickly do this. So with the hamstring mobility work, I was doing that straight leg, boom, to there. Okay, keeping the back, flat of my back on the ground. If you find that difficult, then what I do is add a little bit of flexion in here. Flex this leg, and like I said, bend at the knee, foot flat on the ground, feel that press of my lower back into the ground, and then all of a sudden, that should be far more doable. Hopefully, that helps. Right, let's have a look. That, I mean, that's just because of tight hamstrings, but that's a nice little workaround. Okay, right folks, I think I'm gonna need to, uh, I'm going to need to go, but hopefully you found that really helpful. I'm going to leave the live stream here. 
There's one thing that I would ask of you. If you are new to this channel, then do consider subscribing, do consider joining what we've got going on here, not just the 30 day challenge, but the whole channel in general. It's all about helping you become stronger runners, running strong, running injury free. And if you're finding the 30 day challenge helpful, yes, do go and share this with as many runners, as many friends as you can. It's completely free. It doesn't matter if they're not here on day one. This content is gonna stay live for a long time. I've got no plans to take it down. It's gonna become evergreen content so you can start at any time and just work at your own pace. Okay, I'll be back to do another one of these at the beginning of stage two. So we've got the next five days working through this workout and variations of it. Again, to get all those variations, do make sure that you hit that link in the first comment, the top comment, the pinned comment, which will take you to a place where you can uh, download the actual 30 day challenge program. And I'll see you very soon. All right, take care. Thanks for joining me today. Bye now.